do you agree with my capabilities? Do you think that's, is that why Lufthansa is, and Lufthansa Group, I should say, but Lufthansa is moving forward with NDC? Well, well first of all, you is know. Is it a GDS bypass? No, I think, first of all, <laughs> you know, I think I, I love your presentation, and, and if you see these presentations and, um, and you would compare them like three, four years ago to what I think we have seen from the industry, I think it's a quantum leap, and uh, actually I would have said that even that could have been my presentation. And um, so I think that changes, uh, shows that there's a lot of change has happened in industry uh, with all stakeholders and uh, that we are now much further the road uh, NDC than maybe people sometimes think. Um, there are still some issues, uh, and you mentioned them. Uh, we can discuss that. But I think, first of all, um, while there has been disruption in the industry on this topic, and I think it needed disruption, and probably we have been one of the front runners in that in 2015, uh, with all, uh, uh, I would say, with all the goods and the bad things that happened, uh, I think right now it's really um, that we stick together as stakeholders, um, be it the GDS, be it the TMCs, be it the airlines, and all the other players to make it work. Because if we don't, uh, somebody else will, and uh, that's going to happen very quickly, I think. And uh, that's something we really have to get our act together. Yeah. So. On, on Lufthansa, next, we, let's talk next year. Everyone's been talking 2020, so let's talk 2020. Of those capabilities that I, that I spoke about, would it be fair to say that sort of smoothing the pricing curve is, is important and you're going to be doing that? And are you going to be bringing in more fair families or offers, corporate offers, so, you know, the fair and the uh, ancillaries together? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, there are two, two components. One is, the, of course, the, the access, the technological access that, that's possible, that needs to be made possible. We, I think, we have made great inroads there on the leisure, on the A sphere. We are not yet 100% there end to end on the corporate side. I think that's the big roadblock still on the way. Uh, concerning the content, I think things are moving very fast now. Uh, they have been sluggish at times. Uh, uh, sometimes uh, the airlines have started to remove content to differentiate. Now it's starting to be the case that we add in content. And the uh, mentioned example of yours is the continuous pricing. It's one where we're going to be live as the Lufthansa Group uh, in Q1. Uh, and live means we are testing right now still, and we have announced it a while ago. Um, so we took a bit longer to do that. But um, I can reassure that by end of Q1, we're going to be live with continuous pricing. And this is not just adding a few price points. This is fundamentally different. It's by really having here uh, segmented uh, willingness to pay estimations where you will then have really a continuous price curve according to certain customer segment. By the way, not personalized yet, nice. segmented, very important. Uh, and there you will see that the customer actually gets a cheaper price than the traditional booking class. You will be able to compare that with the traditional representation in the classical distribution systems, and you will realize at a given point in time, under same, same conditions, that this price will be cheaper will be cheaper than the uh, published price on the traditional booking curve. And why is that? And why we would make money then? Yeah, you would ask, uh, why would you do that? We would do it because we will be able to manage better the capacities, also shorter towards departure, and particularly the volumes. By better estimating the willingness to pay, we will create greater volumes. And I think your estimation of potential benefits is pretty much in line with what we actually expect. So we think it's still you know, worthwhile, uh, and it's going to be an additional value for the customer, but it's not currently available in the existing uh, technological um, representation in traditional forms of, of um, uh, GDS, so that's why we have to go that step and get NEC implemented. It's only one example, but there are many others in terms of ancillaries and making them also, also uh, dynamic. Uh, we're currently also testing dynamic uh, ancillaries with AI, um, and uh, that's something we're going to bring very soon as well. We're testing it already, yeah. So, yeah, well, um, when, I was in, when I was in the airline, a 1% to 4% increase in revenue or yield was uh, huge. So um, that's not to be sniffed at. Um, how are you going to create these pricing points? Are, they, are you using double digit on your, you know, so AA and AB and everything like that? Or are you spot pricing them? So have you gone completely away from the ATP code, yes. you know, way? And yes, now there will be parallel worlds. I mean, we will be, uh, for some time to go, we will be in parallel worlds. 
and we will be omnichannel. And in this new world, there won't be any booking class anymore. There will be still the reference point of the booking class, but we will represent really a continuous price curve, and we will have their segmented prices. The trick that we still haven't done then after Q1 next year is then to combine them with dynamic ancillaries to a dynamic packaging. I think that's still some time to go. I think that will take another 12, 18 months, but that's also a reasonable time frame. And then we come to dynamic bundling. As you rightly said, this will be based on bundles that, that we will offer to certain uh, customer groups. Um, and we have to be very, very careful that we don't confuse them. Uh, simplification is at the same time while you make this a very important thing and you will not offer everything to everybody. Uh, try to keep it smart, to s clean and simple, uh, but hit the nerve of the customer. I think that will be uh, the trick and uh, still some time to go for that, but we're starting step by step and I think you will see a lot of additional content now in the very um, uh, next uh, near future. One thing I didn't say when I was saying that the airlines are, are keen to move down this NDC path um, you know, is so you can use the capabilities. But there is also, from the airline side, the complexity of managing a route um, with both, you know, the old ATP co edifact method, you know, your old traditional, um, you know, um, uh, yeah, methods throughout the airline, and then the new yeah. um, NDC. Yeah. Do you, are you got your vision? I'm not, I don't want you to give me time scales, but if you've got a vision where you're going, we've got to get rid of doing it both ways and we want to be 100% NDC. Ultimately, of course, uh, for that we also definitely need to have also agreements uh, with the GDSs and uh, you're moving also fast. So while we still have discussion with commercials, I don't think we have that much disagreement on the path forward. Uh, until that has happened, and it will still take some time, uh, I think we will have parallel worlds. We prepared for that, so our teams are flexibly equipped with uh, tooling that they can do both. Uh, and we have to hire a few guys also for that. <laughs> But uh, uh, in, in the end, I think we will move completely new world, but it will take, it will take time. So, um, so there's not only the question of the end-to-end the -end access, technological access, not only the question of the content, how to fill the shelf, but there's also an industry political question about it. And that's definitely the discussion about how is the cake distributed um, and who gets what profit share according to the service that he gives to the customer. And I think that discussion is ongoing, the cake is growing, but also the pies will look different, I think, in the end. And that's a, also the discussion we, we always tend to like, kind of keep uh, as the elephant in the room, but it's there and something we have to solve together, and I think we're on a good way, then in a reasonable time frame we can do that as well. Sure. Going back, because you've got a, a, your, you head up the distribution, so are your revenue management managing you know the the two different ways is is that is that really difficult is it complex is it as you say you're going to bring in some new skill sets can you retrain someone that is being used to you know distributing with 26 fare buckets to then going you know it's infinite yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, it's How do they do that? Is it, it definitely needs new skills. I mean, we have people where we believe they can very well do that. Um, we're training them. Uh, we need also to get some new people. Um, we're also hiring people, as you said, from retailing, not necessarily from the airline industry, for the ancillary questions. Um, and here we're talking very much um, more to a flight and fare related, less so the non-flight, less so the parking lot, but uh, still in the traditional uh, field of near to the actually flight experience. Uh, and people there who come with uh, experience from retailing, I think, help us a lot. Um, so we're looking at a lot of, lot of cross-industry topics and not necessarily hiring only talent from the industry. But it's, it's a quite a mountain still to climb. Um, and um, I think we've got a good team. Uh, and I think um, with the multi-hub structure where we have in, in the Lufthansa group, where we're not only resourcing in one place, uh, we also have an advantage there. Yeah. Okay, let's, uh, let's uh, see, and I, I begged everyone to give me Slido questions, Let, let's start taking some of those. So, what do you think the, this, this question comes up quite a lot on, on panels recently, what's the biggest myth about NDC? I think the biggest myth is that's not there. Um, <laughs> because, you know, just the numbers, I mean, uh, we just, uh, uh, you know, you know, the Yatta may be the, the target for the leaderboard, and um, I'm also changing the leaderboard there for the Yatta recently. We have set now ourselves even a higher target for, for 2022. But for 2020, we said that we want to reach 20% of indirect sales via the new NDC uh, distribution standard. Uh, I can tell you that we, for example, for Swiss, uh, October, we reached 24% already. And this target was end of 20. 
So mass adoption is happening. It's already there. And it's coming, I think, all the 17 airlines of the leaderboard uh, committed to that for end of 2020, so 20% of indirect sales. And we will set a much higher target for 2022. I think it's happening. As I said, where it's not yet happening, that's on the corporate side for various reasons. And that's, that's another chapter to discuss about. I think uh, we can spend yeah, another hour. Yeah. There's always more complexity yeah. when you're into a TMC and, and corporate. Um, so, you're, you're, I, I said this on stage, you're all sticks. Are you going to soften and be nice and have some carrots for the, nice, everyone? Nice. Uh, there's, there's, a African, <laughs> <laughs> there's an African saying that says, uh, if you want to get fast, go alone. If you want to get far, go together. And I think while the first phase of that industry changing momentum has been probably on the fast track, now I think it's very important that we do it together. So, we have to find... We have to find a way that we agree uh, with all the big players in the industry, be it you, be it the other players. Uh, I think it's going to be um, not a world without GDSs, if that was maybe somebody assuming. I think it's going to be a world where we be together, so we, we're in the same boat. And in the aquarium, as the fish always meet a couple of times. That's good. I like that answer. That's good. Um, why are some airlines not convinced about NDC? You do a lot on the IALTA panels and that, don't you? So wh why, why do you think not everyone's come along? And I, I, let me broaden that. Is What I would say is th there's an answer technically for large airlines such as yourself. Is there a solution at the moment for tier two, tier three airlines? Well, I think it's a very good question. I, and I think while we have probably have different resources, not everybody has that. So. Um, there will be definitely different speeds, and, and I think being an aggregator here and make a great offering and service, um, uh, but a service that, is, that you actually charge for um, in, in the right uh, value chain, I think that is a big uh, advantage that, that the GDSs have, and I think you can play here a big role for the smaller carriers who are not not having that same technological abilities. We definitely have to take care of that, that this is also happening, and um, um, while there are also new plays uh, coming, I think some of the carriers directly go to the new players. If you look at players like Trip Actions, Travel Perk, they do full end-to-end -end corporate, full end-to-end -end corporate uh, value chain management uh, from duty of care to call centers of everything. Of course, you can connect directly to them. Yeah, so you have to have a multi-sourcing option. Uh, that's the thing. That's the trick. Uh, the investment. If you don't willing to do that, then I think aggregation with um, traditional players can also be a very good alternative. And uh, we have to do it together. So we have to take care for also the ones that will be not so quick. And, and I think um, you will see different speeds for sure for a number of years to come. You've mentioned a bit about agents and, and corporates, but um, are you seeing them coming on, on board more now? Well, it's... it's they the, softening. Yeah, the big elephant is still in the room. It's also who pays to whom what. So that, that's something we still have to solve, and that's, that's in the triangular relationship between GDSs, TMCs, and us, it's still a discussion. Um, what is good that we have started, or we restarted the discussion, intensified them um, by, for example, in Yata, we have now the various interest groups being represented, the GDSs, we have the GTEC, which is the TMC representation, and the leaderboard of the airlines, and we have started the discussion, what are the technological impediments still there? There's a list, when you look at NEC at scale, for business, there's a list also from the TMCs that, that they gave us and said these, these points we think need to be fulfilled in order to have a smooth technological transition. Uh, I think that's something we're jointly working on now and that's very good. There's an active discussion on that on an industry basis and not each airline which each player, which is also happening, but we need to have some, some uh, of the way going together now. Um, that still uh, remains um, a topic, but we also need to solve the, the financials. Are you working in detail with some corporates that are going, right, you know, we've had all of this hype, you know, can we now prove it? Some that are, you know, coming along in a positive way that they're going like, right, can we test this? Because we're being asked this, um, you know, with some corporates, they're going, are we able to now test this? Airline X says, you know, they can put out corporate offers for me, they can make them more personalized, they'd be better, they'd be better for me. Can we now trial this? Yep. We do that. We do this with, with, all, with all GDSs. I mean, we, we have with every GDS, we have a trial running. We don't have yet agreements about the future, but we are doing these trials. I think everybody's wise to do that, particularly when the industry has not been fully established yet for the corporates. Um, I think that's the way to go. 
and uh, and really, uh, but we have to add it with an industry initiative that that we can um, make it also an industry standard when we talk about uh, NEC for corporates. I think you've answered the one about the GDSs. So, all right, I don't know. This is a this is in court at the moment. So, do you want to say anything about? Fair Logics or not? <laughs> fair Logics is your provider, I should yeah. say. That's yeah. uh, that's public knowledge. So they're your fair. They're your provider. Uh, the new ownership that's being, you know, questioned in court is. Do you want to say anything about that, or well, do you, you have to, not? Actually, you have to ask Saber about, not not really us. And we have a, we have an agreement with Fair Logics, which is very well. And I'm, I'm I'm really I think they're really one of the industry leaders. I think in terms of new um, technology, in terms of disruption of the industry in positive sense. Um, I think uh, we really admire them. We have a very close relationship. I do not see that being changed with whatever comes out of that uh, current uh, merger process or the uh, purchasing of Philogics process. It's still in the courts, so I can't really um, uh, discuss it. Or, and so I think it's something you, you have to ask. Uh, Sabre, I don't think that they will say much more than that. Perhaps it's a topic for next year. Yes. Um, uh, you, you've already said about the, the 2020. You're confident you're going to make your 20%. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, I, let me talk about the, the rest. Um, I think, I think, well, there's been a softening of the of the attitude, and that is we're going to work towards it. And I actually believe that's not a bad thing. I don't think this hard target, if if it's achieved or it isn't achieved, is it uh, you know a success or a failure. I've always been a big supporter of the 20% target because it's given the industry something to focus on. I've also said if you can hit 20%, then there's no reason you can't hit 40, 50, 60%. So it is a meaningful number. What we are seeing is the airlines moving towards that. You're also seeing a slight change, as, as we were saying. We're, we, we're much closer in our viewpoint now. And that is that it's important to get there together. It's important to get there with the right technology. And if that means you're going to be a quarter late or something like that, well, that still has to happen. The other thing is, is as I try to demonstrate without boring everyone, the devil is in the detail in NDC. And so when you scrape down to the level, we have roadmaps and we go, we're, you know, we're live with Qantas, for example. We're also live with these guys, but we're live with Qantas. But what does live mean? You know, and then you go, well, can you do this functionality? Can you do, well, and we have two things. You have the airline coming in and does the airline fair logics or whoever their technology provider is have that capability and then we have to build it into our points of sale either our api that then an ota or a big tmc takes they then have to develop against that or it's within smartpoint our desktop solution and our competitors are in a similar situation so you know, they, when you say you're live, it's, it's then, you know, you start asking, you need to ask a couple of questions. What does that really mean? What I would say is by about the first quarter of next year, when we're saying you're live, you're going to be a lot more capable. You're going to have the capabilities to do the, those sales capabilities that the airlines want to do. You will be able to do it. Qantas talked publicly about being able to personalize on a frequent flyer number. That will be possible from the first quarter of next year and, and, and things like that. And the stuff that Lufthansa has been talking about, that again will be possible. So there's live, there's testing, and then there's at scale. Are you worried? Because you know how many hits GDSs take. Mm -hmm. And we always stand up here and go like, you know, hey, we're big and we can do all of these. And we've got, you know, these enormous data centers around the world. That responsibility is coming on to you. That capability is coming on to you as the airline. So are you concerned about being able to take all of the hits that the particularly OTAs and everyone will be? And the corporates are also saying they don't trust you when you personalize. So they're going to do an anonymous yeah. search and a personalized search to start with. I think if you prove them over time, then they will stop that. But that will increase the traffic to your web, to your site. Well, not necessarily the size. As I said, we go omni-channel, so we will have all distribution channels available. I think it's very important that we are transparent in what we do. Um, when I say, for example, continuous pricing, you will be able to compare it with the traditional pricing and the traditional GDS, so you will immediately see that this is a, is a good offer. Uh, I think that creates trust. Uh, I'm not scared at all. I think we, we, um, we took a lot of bullets already, so we are kind of battle-proven. 
but um, we will not deviate. And I think this is a very clear path that we have gone. We have never retracted. We have never changed course. And I think we're very clear with our strategy. Uh, partnership is very important. We have now 3,500 partners, 70 technology providers. It's not just a few guys that we connected. Yeah? And, uh, and, and just look at examples which are there. I mean, I'm not making advertising for some TMC, but look at on the, on the website of Trip Actions. Go there and see it, and see what customer experience you can see there. And in the end, that was the main idea of it. Of course, it's about the economics, but the main idea is you need to hit the, the, what, the industry, what the customer really wants. And if it's customer friendly, in the end, that will, will win. And uh, I think that customer centricity is the driving force for all of us. It should be. And, and otherwise, we will, we will just disappear. And so I think that should be our, our common uh, rallying around point and, uh, and not some uh, other points of, of saying uh, this or that is not there, which is the case. But we have to work on that. Yeah. But one of the dilemmas is, at the moment, we do a whole load of cashing. Uh, but if you want to personalize, you can't cash. And so uh, have you guys thought through that? Or you're just like, we've got to work a way around this? I always talk about this sort of in, you know, intelligent cash, where you could let through what you want let through and not what you don't. But I don't know whether that would be even be possible to, to be able to be built. But yeah, I, I, think, I, think, I think also the question would go back. What do you do to allow in the future a technological standard that uh, gives the personalization option? So I think the GDS really have to also think about that. Um, we see this life in, 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 in other new industry uh, segments, so I think it will have to be one technology feature that, that um, is happening also as a change process with the GDSs. Um, I, think, I think that's something that's really um, important. And we are, sci we are alive with Agencia, we are alive with Expedia, we are alive with many other players. Uh, that's happening there, yeah? So I um, uh, can only reiterate that um, the thing is there. I think on, on blockchain, I would just say, we haven't delivered APIs yet, so moving on to, I, I think the technology will move on, of course it will. Um, whether it is to blockchain or not, I don't know, but uh, that won't be for the next couple of years. I think we need to ground what we've got to start with and then, but, you know, it is ironic that we are talking about NDC as being new technology and APIs have been around for um, numbers and of, of years. Um, let's pick... Um, Let's, let's, let's pick one last question, because we're just running out uh, of the very important role of uh, JVs over the Atlantic. How does NDC tackle CS or even JVs? I'm not sure what CS is. Code share. Code share. Oh, thank you. Code share is easy. JVs are different. Yeah, yeah I think uh, that, that's a good question, actually. I think we still have some way to go to harmonize also along the JVs. And that's also uh, due partly to the fact that the industry political development in North America, when you look at that JV for, for, as an example, has been different than in Europe. So, and for that, uh, also the drive uh, to, to do change in industry has been different, pricing has been different, and uh, um, we are aligning, for example, very closely with our partners, Akanda and United, on that. Uh, I think we still have some way to go, uh, going exactly the same way. Um, to harmonize and make it easy for the customer. So I would expect that for a time being, uh, while you're on one GV, let's say, a geography, you will have for various point of sale, east and west bound on the transatlantic, slightly different regimes on that. Uh, they're simply given the different histories of the, of the two geographic areas. So I think that is still something we need to tackle and we need to solve, we need to get better at. Yeah, there's, there's more to go. Um, I apologize. Yet again, I've never ever been able to get through all of the uh, the questions, but I think we've we've answered a lot. I hope the session's been uh, very useful to you, and I really uh, appreciate to me you coming along and the honesty and the openness that you've given to the audience. So thank you very much. Thanks, Ian. Thank you.